there is no pain quite like the pain of watching your child be harmed, be hurt, be abused, um, to suffer, to even just have an accident. I couldn't explain it before I had kids. I couldn't understand it. Uh, I thought I did. I thought I was a caring person. But it's the sort of thing that until you're a parent, you cannot understand it. It's a whole new experience when your child self-harms. You can jump on the internet. You can have a look at a bunch of stuff. And it will tell you the things to do when your child is self-harming. And, and they're great. Look them up. But for me, these are three things that really helped me get through it. And I want to share with them with you today. Hey, if you like the podcast, please like, share, subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Uh, let's dive into this episode and see what happens. Welcome to Mark My Words. Mark My Words is the story of my journey from a place where I was shattered to where I could live again. Okay, so you've got a beautiful, healthy, wonderful child. Um, they're amazing. They do, every day, they do things that make you laugh. Um, they make your family complete. There's so many things about having a kid that you're just delighted by. But then one day you find out that your child has self-harmed. And it's shattering. It's, it's soul shattering. This thought that your child is going through something that is so bad for them or so their experience is so horrible that the only way that they can deal with it is to, try, is to hurt themselves. This happened to us. So, what worked what honestly worked not what this the professionals say not what the you know the the internet says what worked for me personally and what worked for me didn't work for my wife and we'll talk a little bit about that but again i don't want to talk to her experience it's her story so for me the first thing was i had to put aside my own pain because your child shows up hurt at any time. We were playing this stupid game once and I, I gave her a hug and we were doing a, a daddy-daughter hug thing and we, we kind of slipped and fell and, and she fell onto um, the window. We both fell onto it and it broke and um, a little bit of glass stabbed her on the top of her leg and it was quite a deep gash and it was, it was, it was really horrible, but you know, it was like, oh, this is my fault. This is my fault. What have I done on an emergency situation? You can't think about that sort of stuff. You just have to act. So you stem the bleeding, you go get help. But what happens when they've self-harmed? They come to you and, and for me, I found out through my wife. It was my first thought was this deep sense of shame and anguish that I was not enough of a parent, of a support for my child, that she felt like she needed to harm herself. So the first thing I had to do was step away from that emotion. I had to step away from the thought that I have done something wrong and maybe I had. My daughter is hurt. It's not about me. It's about her. So the first thing was stepping aside from that emotion. And, and even as I'm saying this, there's going to be parents out there that are going, that's impossible. It's hard, but it's not impossible. The second thing that I had to do was, and this is, this is a, a, a weird one is not blame her 
my instinctive reaction was to jump up and go, why would you do this? What the hell is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? I couldn't do that. So the first thing I stepped away from that emotion, the second thing I had to do was ensure that my response was not negative. Because I don't know, I could have made it a million times worse. Now, self-harm has never really been an issue for me. It's, you know, I've had suicidal ideation, but I've never thought about, you know, or struggled with the concept of hurting myself. Did it once, didn't do anything, just didn't do it again. What I had to do is I had to stop myself being angry at her. And it's a whole different thing from separating yourself from the anxiety and the guilt and the fear, which is the first step. The second step is making sure that my response was acceptance, understanding, not contrition, not anger, not frustration. It was all about just ensuring that my response was, you can never be positive about a wound on your child's body, but how you respond to them can be positive. I love you. I don't know why you've done this, and I'm so sorry that you felt you needed to, but I love you. Okay, the third thing that I had to do was to remind myself that I could not fix the problem. And I have to do this over and over and over. It's not a one-off process. It's not me going, uh, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore, so I won't do it. It's, it's no, it's realizing that I am not the guy that can help fix this. Because you want to do that as a father. You want to step in and you want to go, well, surely it's easy to not do it. Once I divorced myself from the thought that I, I was the solution, that even in places that I could be part of the solution, you know, I had to take that direction from trained professionals. What do you want me to do? Well, Mark, we need you to do this, 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 and this. And it's individual for each and every person. Again, what I've said is a little bit different to what you'll get on the internet because I'm not talking about my reaction to her. I'm talking about my reaction to myself in and of myself. How did I move past and get to the point where I could be the most helpful father I could be. That was clearly stepping away from the emotion, setting aside the guilt, setting aside the, 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 I, the idea that I had failed. Now, maybe I had, and <laughs> I've said it a lot. Um, my kids are all going to end up in therapy but at least I know what they're going to say because <laughs> I'm messed up and I messed up their lives. And so I know what they're going to say. The three steps again, one step away from the guilt and the emotion of, of, of this is my fault Two, make sure that my response to her is loving and supportive. She has done nothing wrong. She's done something that I wish she hadn't done. She's done something which I wish she had have chosen any other thing to do, but she's done something. Stepping away from that idea that, or well, stepping away from that instant reaction of, why would you do this? And then the third thing is knowing in myself that I could not fix the problem. As a parent, we want to fix the problem. We want to make sure that this problem is dealt with. But when it comes to something like this, I am not the guy. I am too close to this situation to be able to affect it in any real way that leads towards fixing the problem. I'm not going to be able to do it. Trained professionals are, and I can be part of the process, but it's part of a process that somebody else has worked out. This is what's going to help your daughter. This is what you need to do. I live in almost constant fear that my kids are going to harm themselves, take their own lives. Um, Because I know that in many ways 
what they're going through is my fault or the fault of my mental illness. They have not had a normal childhood. They have lived with a father who is very, very broken. When we respond to our kids' mental illnesses, those three things are key for me at every step of the way, but particularly when I see self-harm. First, step away from the guilt. It's not about you. It's not time for you to blame yourself. It's not time for you to recriminate and anguish and wail about why this has happened. You have to set that aside. Two, you have to make sure that your response is loving and supporting. You cannot give them a negative response. The third thing is knowing that I can't fix the problem. Those are the three things. Now, in all of this, you will look at the internet and it will tell you a whole bunch of stuff to do and by all means you do it. But when it came to reacting to my daughter's self-harm, these are the three things that really helped me. I appreciate you listening. If you like what we're doing, please share it around. Tell your friends. Like, share, subscribe. I appreciate you. I'll speak to you next week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Mark My Words. I'd like to thank my producer, Meredith Brosnan, and also Torian, Kevin, and Lorraine. And I can't forget the band Adelaide, who allows us to use their song as our theme.